everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Outside the Arena, the last episode of 2020. Uh, I am Griffin Senek, joined by my co-host, Mac Rommel. Uh, and on behalf of the both of us, we hope uh, that you and, and your families had a, a nice uh, and happy holidays. Uh, and you know, we also wish you a happy new year. Going into the new year, like we said, big year for Outside the Arena. Uh, stay tuned, should be uh, a video explaining where we're going what the next steps are for the podcast coming out early January, probably either the first or the second, we're hoping sometime then to get uh, some content out and explain to you guys what we're doing. But today, it's just gonna be a typical episode, uh, but we're gonna start off with some NBA. So Mac, are you ready to get the show on the road? I'm ready, let's get right into it. All right, so we are gonna go through a few topics. Uh, and the first one we're gonna talk about today is the James Harden saga going on in Houston. So. For anyone who doesn't know, or just a recap for anyone, James Harden was recently fined $50,000 uh, for violating COVID protocols. Uh, I guess he went to a strip club and was not wearing a mask. It seems like, you know, James is, you know, he's he's a, he's a, he's a stud. I mean, he's a savage. He knows yeah. what he's up to. Uh, you got to respect that flight. But put, put the mask on, you know. Um, don't respect it that, you know, you're fucking up. Uh, oh, Curtis, I guess we're going PG-13 for, for uh, this episode. Um, you're messing up your um, team and, you know, I'm all over the place right now, but I'm going to come us back. Houston's game on Wednesday versus the Oklahoma City Thunder was canceled uh, because of this worry about the COVID protocols uh, involving James Harden. They had not uh, resolved the issue quite yet. Uh, and also they, have, I believe, had some inconclusive tests as well. Uh, obviously, James Harden has requested a trade that's been kind of the news in the forefront for the past two months. Uh, he's got teams on his list. Uh, such as Brooklyn, Philly, Miami, Milwaukee, and the other day recently added Portland and Boston. So James Harden clearly wanting to play for a contender, wanting to compete for a championship. But Mac, I'm going to flip this one to you. I mean, with this whole saga going on, I mean, it just seems like he's just trying to get his way out, trying to do whatever he can to leave. So how do you think, I mean, in what way do you think this affects his trade value? Maybe the Rockets desire to move him. What are you thinking about this whole situation? It's it's very weird, as you said. I mean, going to a club during COVID. I mean, and right as the season's starting too. So it's you got to think that something is up in some sort of way. But in terms of his trade value, this this is taking a it's probably going to take a big change. Uh, of course, the Nets, as you said, there or once was a big contender for them. A lot of people were saying he should go there, but for the Nets and all these other teams that may be looking at him, I don't know if it's a smart idea. I mean, just because it happened to the Rockets, he wants to leave, go somewhere else. You're not sure. Could this happen to you? I mean, you see with all these players, like maybe an Antonio Brown of football where they have some problems. They go to another team and they end up having more problems. Luckily for AB, of course, now he's rocking Tampa, doing well. But who knows with this? It's always an uncertain situation you cannot be sure of. And if I'm a team looking to trade for Harden, uh, out my asking price would be definitely definitely excuse me be much much lower i don't want to take a risk on a guy who will have problems off the field and then or off the court and may uh, not even be able to play on the court uh come game day and uh things like that so other teams i think his trade value will decrease and for the rockets i think that they uh they're going to try and get him away from them as soon as they could i love your antonio brown comparison there because i feel like it's kind of the same thing you remember when he was with the uh the oakland raiders at the time nope. um you know, he was having those meetings with teammates. I mean, he was throwing uh, chairs all over the place. He was cursing people out. He was, he was just causing a bunch of disruptions and just being a huge, huge issue. I mean, the whole helmet thing was really weird. He couldn't get that yep. resolved. And then that eventually releasing him. I'm not saying the Rockets are going to release James Harden because, I mean, the money and guaranteed stuff is a lot different in the NBA. That would have a huge, huge negative impact on the Houston Rockets for their, like, next mega amount of years. But it hurts his trade value because no one wants, you know, it, he's now being portrayed now as this like kind of cancer for a locker room. You know, he, he had this, you know, he showed up late to training camp or uh, preseason. He was having a fight with a rookie. I and mean, he was throwing a ball at a rookie. I mean, he, this guy's supposed to be a leader for the team and you're throwing a ball at a rookie. I mean, this is Especially just no one. 32 yeah. and you're still acting like you're a rookie too. That's something a rookie would do, not a, a veteran who these rookies are yeah. looking up to. Exactly. I mean, he's trying to be a role model. And, and if I'm a, an opposing club, like a, a Brooklyn Nets right now, who's 2-0 and looking great, I don't want to bring this guy on board. I don't want to sacrifice the amount that I'm going to have to give up, the amount the Houston Rockets are going to be wanting. And I don't think their price is necessarily going to change. That's why I think this saga is going to continue for a while. Obviously, Harden is expected to suit up tonight, uh, I believe, against Portland. Um, so, 
we'll see what happens. But, I mean, it's really hurting his trade value. I feel like teams are not going to want this guy in their locker room. And we'll see what happens. I mean, he's obviously the talent is there, but like Antonio Brown, the talent was there, but he got released. He sat out, had to change his character. Now he's doing his thing, but you know, we'll see what happens with James Harden, but um, I don't expect this to be resolved in the short term. I don't think the Rockets are going to get their price that they want. And I don't think these other teams are going to be willing to pay that at this point. So we'll see what happens with that situation. Now we are going to talk about probably the two best teams, arguably, obviously, you got the defending champs, Los Angeles Lakers. Slow start in game one. They lost from 116 to 109 uh, to the Los Angeles Clippers, their crosstown rivals. Big issue is they really just off the, off the get-go were down 39-19. They got outscored in the first. That's never a way you want to go there. Uh, Gasol really didn't look great there. Uh, AD was all right, 18.7 boards. But game two, they really, really came back to form against Dallas. You know, you saw LeBron, AD, Schroeder, and Harrell, obviously the, the last two there. New additions for the Lake Show, combining for 90. Uh, so big win there for the Lakers. And then on the flip side, we got the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, probably the most anticipated debut uh, was KD and Kyrie coming together. We've been waiting for that all year. Obviously, KD last year was out with the torn Achilles, and they played great. They've blown up both their opponents, the Warriors 125 to 99, and you got Boston 123 95. Boston, you know, one of the, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying like Boston accent there. I don't know what's going on yeah, there, but. I got 123.95 on the score there. Katie, right back in form, 25 and a half points per game with 66.7% shooting from three. I know it's been two games, but still solid to see. And you got Kyrie averaging 31 and a half with six assists. Levert, 15 points per game. So I said all that, but Mac, I'm going to flip this one to you to start. Could the Nets be competing with the Lakers for the best team in the NBA here? Or do you think the Lakers still are on top of that throne? You know, in, in many sports we see, it's really these teams, they got leaders. They've done it before, and they build on that. They only get better. And the Nets, they're new. Of course, the, they're building and trying to get that connection with Kyrie and KD. But the Lakers, AD, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James, they've done it before. Last year, once the NBA Finals and won. And you really can't go against that. Two of the best in the game right now, and their connection is on fire. They do sit at one one as you do, did say, but – the leadership is really, really what puts them over the edge. You have two leaders, two veterans, two best in the league. And once the playoffs come, I think that's going to be what carries them. The Nets right now, they may look more explosive in all those things. But when the playoffs come, could they hang in with teams like the Lakers, as I just said, not having that connection that they have? But over time, that will build. But right now, I do think the Lakers, just because leadership, connection, that's what's important in uh, in team sports. And that's why I do think the Lakers are the better team right now. I mean, I love LeBron James here, but, you know, I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets. I really, really like what I'm seeing from Brooklyn. And I think people forgot how good Kyrie Irving was. You know, you hear all this media junk with him. You know, he really gets hate from the media. And, you know, he has done some, some weird things. He's not uh, necessarily a normal person uh, with quotes there. Um, you know, he's burning sage and, and whatnot, but he, he's playing great. I mean, I, I was watching the game yesterday on Christmas and, you know, his three point shot is just smooth. You know, he just, he can pull up from anywhere. He can make it from anywhere. And I think people are forgetting that because they had all this drama in Boston, obviously last year with Brooklyn, he had a hot start and then he was injured for most of the year. So I feel like people are forgetting how good Kyrie is. And I mean, KD, I mean, you can't forget this guy. If he's back to form, he's going to be, you know, top three player in this league. Uh, with ease and he looks like he is he looks healthy he's shooting the ball good which is what you want to see and you know they got all these role players too which can't go unnamed they got spencer dinwiddie fantastic point guard Karis LeVert, young superstar there joe harris just got a big extension in the offseason i believe 75 million he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league they got the big men deandre jordan jared allen i mean the list goes on and on with the nets depth only worry i got for them first time head coach steve nash that said steve nash he's been there before he is you know he's an all-star he was an all-star he knows uh, you know, he knows the NBA life, and I think he's going to be able to relate to these players really well. We'll see if, you know, the coaching situation gets a little sketchy. Um, but, yeah, that's what I got. I think the Nets right now, you know, really, really early, I know, in the season. But right now, they might be my favorite team and the team to beat uh, in the NBA. So we'll see what happens there. Last thing we're going to touch on for the NBA, some surprises uh, that we had early on uh, in the season, the first, you know, few days of the season, anything that stuck out to you. So Mac, uh, I'll start with you here. What stuck out to you in the first few days of the NBA season? I mean, obvious, I think this is one a lot of people will definitely agree on. And right now this is Paul George living up to his contract. I think 
so far, he's really easily done that. He got his four-year, $190 million extension. I mean, right now, 28 points per game in two games. That's 11th in the NBA. And the majority in front of him only played one game. So that number is going to drop, and he could easily be in the top five within the next few days when he plays more games. Maybe even top three, we could see him reach. But right now, coming into a new team, fitting well. Of course, they got Kawhi Leonard there. Connection seems strong so far. I mean, right now, he's also tied for first on the team with defensive rebounds. And uh, he's first in, the, in, in assists, excuse me. But the Clippers, they sit at 2-0. and And remember that first team that they played? The Lakers. I mean, one of the best, best teams in the NBA. As I said, I do think they are the best right now. But you're going there, beating a team in your first game with a new team, you ball out, you play great. That's what you want to see. He's not diminishing playing worse against great teams. This is what you want to see. And I do believe he is easily living up to his contract right now. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. I think, you know, the the thing with Paul George really is, you know, the regular season last year was great. I mean, he was like, I believe he might've even been an MVP candidate, uh, defense player of the year type, type stuff there, but you know, he's got to show up in the playoffs. I mean, that's, that's what he needs to be paid for. And, you know, last year he didn't. So, uh, for me, until Paul George proves he can play in the playoffs, you can't say anything about the contract. He's a great player, no doubt, but uh, can he be clutch? I'm going to talk about, you know, I'm going to go to my Cleveland roots, as I love to do each show. I'm going to go to my favorite uh, NBA team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I was really, really pleased uh, with their first game. They won 121 to 114 over the Charlotte Hornets. Obviously, the big storyline there was LaMelo Ball's debut, and they held him to zero points. He had uh, three assists, one rebound in uh, 16 minutes, but, you know, they shut him down, which is pretty good to see, but uh, you know, Sexton had 27, Garland 22, Drummond really, really good game, uh, 13 points, eight assists, 13 rebounds, almost a triple double for Andre Drummond. You know, you don't expect that out of the big man there. Uh, Okora was the best rookie on the floor. He had 11 points, five assists, three rebounds. He looks great. He obviously had that game winner uh, in preseason. I love just what they're doing. I mean, you saw Kevin Love, Kevin Porter, obviously not playing, so they'll get those guys back eventually. Uh, I'm not sure if they're playing tonight against Detroit, uh, to be honest. But I mean, you've heard Coach JB Bickerstaff say. They want to be the least selfish team in the league. And I love this idea. I feel like if this Cavs team can really spread the ball around, they really have a lot of underrated guys on this team. I mean, Kevin Love's kind of an underrated guy still. I know he's aging, but he's still solid. Andre Drummond they have. They brought in JaVale McGee. He's a fantastic uh, addition there. They have Sexton Garland. Those guys are still young and proving. Okoro, obviously. Uh, They got my boy Chetty Osman. I wouldn't be talking about the Cavs uh, if I didn't mention my man Chetty. Uh, He got some minutes off the bench yesterday. Sad to see him not starting, but... It's what happens with the team. So I feel like the Cavs could be making a sneaky run at the playoffs. I know it's one game, could be making a stretch. But this team, if they can really be the least selfish team in the league, I feel like if they can spread that ball around, they'll be a playoff team, maybe an 8-7 seed type option in the East. But we'll see what happens there. Yep, we'll have to see. But now I think this is one we both have on our list right now. And this is the Warriors. We know two games so far against two of the best bet or two of the better teams in the NBA. And that's the Bucks and the Nets were blown out in both. I mean, Warriors, they are not looking good right now. No matter who you're going against, I don't want to see you getting blown out like that. No one wants to see that. I mean, honestly, without Klay Thompson, you're missing a key part of that, that team. And uh, you got Steph Curry. I mean, he can't really carry this team on his own. I mean, especially defensively. They're giving up too, too many points so far. It's only been two games against two great teams. But you're going to have to pick things up defensively if you're going to want to make a shot at the playoffs. Uh, even with injuries, there's always a shot, no matter who the player is. But defensively, you got to play cleaner. you got to stop those deep shots, those three-pointers. And uh, the, the Warriors, excuse me, right now, they're in deep trouble if they cannot turn things around, especially defensively. Yeah, I agree with you. I think right now they're they're being exposed for how important Clay Thompson really is. I mean, Curry's averaging, you know, almost 20 points. He's only shooting 20% for a three, but that's two games. So I'm not going to focus too, too much on that. Wiseman, the rookie second pick in the draft, looks great. He's averaging 18 and a half at seven boards. But outside of those two, I mean, it's been kind of a pathetic effort. You see Kelly Oubre. I mean, the girls go crazy for this guy, obviously, you know, anyone does Kelly Oubre, but you know, he's doing his Naruto stuff out of the tunnel and, you know, he's dropping four and a half a game in the first two games. He can't be doing that. You know, it's kind of like the, the Juju Smith Schuster incident, which we'll, we'll probably discuss, I'm sure, uh, oh, yeah. coming up. So stay tuned for that. But you can't be doing this, you know, cocky stuff and then you're dropping four and a half. I mean, let's go, let's, let's run to the court. Let's take your jumpers and let's get, let's get playing. You're not averaging four and a half points per game. And Andrew Wiggins has not been good. 12 and a half. They need him to step up. He needs to be kind of the number two scorer almost. I mean, Wiseman's taking that role, but you got to be scoring if you're Andrew Wiggins. You can't be shooting uh, basically 30% 
from the field. That can't be happening. So those Warriors, uh, you know, they got Curry and Wiseman looks great right now. But outside of those two, you really have to see a step up. Obviously, Draymond coming back soon will help. But, I mean, these guys got to get it going because right now they, they, they have not looked good. They haven't broken 100 yet, and they got to turn it around. But it is early, so we'll see what happens with Golden State. And that will do it uh, for our basketball discussion today we'll be uh we'll be doing basketball every week now pretty much so uh stay tuned for more basketball stuff uh, if you have any topics you want us to discuss uh you can leave it in the comments dm us on instagram our podcast instagram uh any of that jazz that works for us but yeah we want to know what you guys want to hear us talk about argue about maybe we get a, a first take kind of style going for some nba stuff so that could be really cool so mac i'm gonna turn this one over to you and uh yeah let's uh let's hit let's talk some football now let's do it Let's do it. So, as always, I'm sure we're starting off with our running backs, our running backs. And this is uh, this going to be a little bit weird. We have four games that have already gone by or will be gone by by the time you got by the time everyone sees this and by the time this is put out. So that's eight teams we can't choose from. So selection is going to be a little bit slimmer here. So we're going to have to pick wisely if we want to win this week. Last week, we came up so short, so short. I believe it was second place. By mm. at one point, it was one point, I think, in late in that uh, brutal. game. But brutal, brutal loss. But this week, we're going to make sure we bounce back and get an even better win. But running backs first, I mean, he has a pr- he, he has a pretty big price tag. But, I mean, you see Derrick Henry, Green Bay. The run defense is not good right now. Derrick Henry, I bet, in, his, in the back of his mind, he's trying to make that push for 2K rushing yards on the season. I think he's the guy we got to keep an eye on and potentially put in this lineup. So anyone that stands out to you at first? I mean, obviously Derrick Henry, David Montgomery has been going off and he plays Jacksonville this week. I feel like it would be a shame if we didn't give him a go. He has been uh, playing out of his mind and I don't know if that will slow down. Honestly, I feel like, you know, I've said that last week that it would slow down, but this week's matchup is not too, too challenging for him. So I don't know if you want to plug him in for now, uh, but I really like David Montgomery this week. Yeah, explosive versus a defense that's lackluster, trying to get that number one and hold on to that number one pick in the draft. I think uh, the Jaguars <laughs> from the goal. We'll be talking about that. That The New York Jets, man. The Jets. The Jets. The darn Jets. Ooh. Blew it. Oh, but man. I think we got to go and check out for someone a little bit cheaper uh, since we spent 28 right there. Uh, who's a cheaper option that may be good? That's probably a little bit too cheap. Uh, Mike Davis versus it is uh, Washington. Yeah. That's a little sketchy. I mean, we could go like a Lev Bell for 19. You know, he's getting the start this week. Yep. Um, obviously, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is injured now with uh, a bunch of issues, I believe. So, I don't know if you want to put him in or or what you're thinking here. Um, yeah, I think that uh, that could be a smart move. I mean, you saw on the minimal carries or whatever carries he had last week. I mean. He did pretty good in his first game where he was actually getting kind of attention. So, 40 points, not bad. Cheap pick there, saving us some money. Yeah. Wide receiver, though. I saw Corvette boy on there. And Corvette, Corvette. I get him. <laughs> um, all right. What do we think we're going to do with this? These receivers are – I don't love these matchups. I don't know why. I mean, Julio oh, Jones is out, yeah. yeah. I mean, Leo Jones is uh, Robert Woods. What did they do? I know. What did they Woods and Cup do in Seattle earlier this year? So Woods dropped a six. So we don't want that. Okay, six. Uh, where's and Cup? Cup drop. So for Seattle, seven yeah, point. Nope. So we're gonna stay away from them too. Clearly. Um, uh, who could be a good option? Jarvis. Oh, but I, we don't. We can't pick him because I think he's going on COVID IR. Oh my. Oh, so I. So Jarvis, Higgins, and Peoples-Jones are all going to be inactive, I believe, tomorrow. So we could go, like, weird. So we might want to pick a Browns, like, we got to get someone from the Browns that's, like, weird. Low-key. Any ideas? Any ideas? I mean, we could go for, like, a Hooper at tight end. We could go for, I don't know who their fourth. I believe it's, like, Cardero Hodge, the fourth receiver on the team or something. He is, uh, what's his price? Has he gotten any looks? So, yeah. He's so, he got some looks. Bucks. So, he's definitely going to be involved this week. As a f- oh. Oh. So, that's a problem. I uh, yeah. So, we need to stay away from Browns receivers then, I guess, yep. since we don't know who will play. 
All right. But maybe we could get like an Austin Eagle. We'll see. Um, God, these receivers are rough this week. It's tough. Yep. Yep. Lock it for 20. I don't even hate. 18 for Amari. I feel like he has a good day against Philly every year. I think that. Let's do it. Yeah. I I like that pick. 18, pretty cheap, I think. A smart move for uh, for there. But let's see. Jeez, this is a tough week. KJ Ham, what's KJ Ham my man up to? I know he gets a lot of touchdowns and stuff. He's so inconsistent. Yeah, we can't. We're we're not gonna be doing that one. I'm sorry to uh, any Broncos fans. I don't know if we have any of those, but if we do, we appreciate you. Um, God, this is tough. Uh, uh, this is a yeah. This is a tough week. Those four games are killing us. You know me. How has he been? Yeah, he hasn't been really doing much without Burrow. Uh, Freaking out. Um, I mean, we could go for like a, a, a maybe Lockett for twenty. Honestly, what did Lockett do last time against the Rams? That is a cheap option versus. He did nine. nine. Ugh. I mean, with DK getting locked up, ugh. this is a really tough week. Who's at the top? I mean, we might just have to pick a really, really stud. I mean, the top side is like a notch. Maybe we go Ridley against Ridley. Casey. Julio's out. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of looks, I think. I mean, let's go Ridley. And then yeah. we need to go someone cheap here. So let's go someone dirt. What dirt, dirt. Oh, could Deontay Johnson have a good day? <laughs> I mean, he could. We could put him in for 20. Um, I mean, do we want to look even cheaper than that, though? Yeah, let's uh, let's see. Alan Lazard for 16 came back. He had a few good games. I mean, I feel like he's a player that has potential. Well, I guess I cannot. uh, Not not having Alan Lazard will not be. uh, Will not be. Yeah, being selected on the board. Um, Definitely. He maybe Marquise Brown. He's been doing all right these past few weeks. Questionable from his knee versus the Giants. Just in full. And he's dropping like 12, so I don't know. You think he would do good against Bradbury? And nope. I don't I don't think he would. So um what's DJ Chark been doing? For Chicago too, so yeah, that's a no-go. Sheesh, this is a tough week. This is actually a struggle. Pittman, I think he fell off the past few weeks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is not looking Maybe good. Maybe we go like a Mike Williams, honestly. For fourteen, see yeah, well, uh, how. Yeah. I mean, he can boom, but it's it's an it's a rough one. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Sterling Shepard could you know. Low key, Josh Reynolds, bro. I'm not gonna lie, Josh Reynolds. I don't. I, I kind of fancy. Oh, never mind. I mean, he <laughs> dropped thirteen. I kind of fancy Josh Reynolds. Oh no, no, no. All right. There he is. Oh my god, this is Laviska. Is he falling off a cliff? I think he has. Actually. Uh, I mean, dude, we're, this is a rough week. Willie Sneed. Why do I feel? Yeah. Oh, he's falling off. I call it. All these guys. I mean, Gallup. Judy? Judy's 12. Hey, that actually could be a good option. Nope. nope. He hasn't done he's much. Dog. Darnell Mooney versus Jacksonville, too. Wait. Ooh. I think that. That may be All right, put him in. We at this I point need to. <laughs> I know we have Montgomery, but we got to put someone in. But now I think we got to go with the man. The man himself, that, Austin Hooper. He's going to get a lot of targets, I think. What are you thinking about that? Yeah, I, I like that move. I don't love any of the other tight ends too, too much. So I feel like that's a that's a solid pickup for us right there. All it's right. a weird lineup this week. It's kind of kind of weird. Yeah. Just <laughs> I like it. But right now, if we get a $10 defense, we have $35 for both our QB and flex. So we can get Derek Henry and then get like a – Thirty dollar QB. Yep, you're in a good spot. Um, I feel like one of these teams could be a good option. I actually now, I think that's a high scoring game. Unless we do, do we think the cat? Uh, Dude, the Bengals D low key against Houston. Like I don't hate that after last week. I haven't been bad. I mean, I mean they're dropping like meh great, games, but it's dog. tough. It's tough. Maybe my – no, not my Jets. I was going to say my Jets, and I was like, get out of here. I don't want them to – I don't want to go 12 and above, really. Yeah, I don't I, – we just got to pick one and hope to get – maybe the Packers. I mean, if we want Derek, though. Yeah, I think he's going to go off. 
Maybe Titans. Yeah. No, Titans D so bad. We're screwed. <laughs> We're in trouble. Maybe the I, I would say Dallas, but Hurts has been killing us. Yeah. I mean, do we pick like I'm I'm ready to give Siri a ring and tell her to pick a number one through six or something? You want to just do that? You no, know let's have some fun. Let's have some. All right, fun. let's do it. Oh, so, Jarvis Landry is actually just downgraded to out. So, all right. Smelly Jarvis. Um, so, all right, so we are going to give Miss Siri a ring. Hey, Siri. No, oh, she's not picking up the phone right now. That's a little awkward. <laughs> so, uh, we'll go from Cowboys down one through six. So, Cowboys one, Titans two, Packers three, Falcons four. Interesting way to pick it. Let's see. Picking number one through six, Siri. Well, it says five. Um, yes. I didn't have it playing. Do we want to go for one so we can hear her, or what do you want? I'm fine to just take the Jets, but I think. Can we hear her, or do you think it doesn't matter? Yeah, I can, let me see. Siri, can you talk? We're having some fun right now. <laughs> We're enjoying it. Last one before you. Oh. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? Yes, Siri. Can you pick a number one through six for the Outside the Arena podcast? I found this on the web. Oh, no, no. Siri, just pick a number one through six, please. The answer is six. So we're going to go with the Bengals defense uh, against the Houston Texans, courtesy of Siri. She was going to pick the Jets, but we wanted you guys to be able to have some audio with Miss Siri. So, all right. Do we just want to put in Derek and just say, screw it? Yep. Why not? <laughs> we'll have $32 at QB. We get a cheaper QB, and then we upgrade it, maybe a receiver spot. Too. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking here, too. Um, let's see who's cheaper. Mike Glennon. Do you know if he's playing that tomorrow? Is it Haskins or Smith? It says 50-50 for Smith. That's what it just said in the report. I mean, we could go for the memes and give Mike Glennon a little look. What did Andy do last week? Did, did Andy have a nice week? Andy's kind of consistent. Going against a depleted Philly secondary, too. I'm kind of feeling we give your boy Andy a little look. I think – do you want to? I think so. Yeah, because then we have $11 to spend elsewhere. Yep, yep. I think that's So do good. we – if we upgrade Lev Bell to a $30 running back, is that what we want to do, or do we want to go for, like, a $23 receiver? Let's see. Are we want – Wait, so we, yeah, we can get like an Austin Eckler to an Eckler, or and then we'd have two dollars. What would Mooney's upgrade? What's like a twenty-three dollar receiver? Twenty-three. So that's around the iffy area. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What about tight end? Is there? You know, I don't really think unless yeah. What's Kelsey? Is kind of my question. Oh yeah. No. 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 All right. Oh wait. No. We. Wait. Oh yeah. No. We can't. No. I kind of like Lev Bell for like an Eckler, maybe. I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Best I don't know option. what you think. Best option, I do think. Yeah, so – because, I mean, Lev Bell is a little risky thinking about it just because, you know, you never know with that offense uh, what they'll do. So, uh, I feel like, you know, I'd love to get Nick Chubb um, if we could free up $2. I sure <sighs> We're not going to be able to fill up $2 anywhere, I don't think. Two, two. Okay. Let's just go Eckler and – and uh and roll with that because i don't think I, I feel like it'll just hurt us too much elsewhere if we uh, or do we is there a 12 dollar defense yeah i'm good never mind <laughs> <laughs> i mean siri picked it we can't go against yeah, siri can't go against her. so um weird lineup this week i'm not even gonna lie but um <laughs> i mean everyone's gonna have a weird one i mean look we got montgomery eckler ridley derrick henry so i think that's four superstars the running got- backs are gonna carry hooper has a lot of chance to uh go off ridley as well, I mean, Cooper always seems to have. Hey, a if Amari has a day with Andy, we're going to be in a very good position to win this thing. I think so. I think so. This is. A, I think this is a good team. I think Mooney may be the one guy. Mooney, <laughs> Darnell, you dirty dog. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right. I think that is a, a pretty fun lineup to say the least. We'll have to see oh, how man. that uh, how that goes. Yeah, I mean, I like the lineup there. Uh, like Max said, we'll see what happens. But uh, we want to get one more win. You said it might go into playoffs. So if it yep. does, we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing it as long as we can. Um, but, yeah, that's that's what uh, we'll, we'll do for now. So now we're going to talk a little NFL. And there's actually a game on right now as we're filming this uh, on a, you know, 640 on Saturday night. 
Cardinals Niners are in a football game and you can see right here balls moving 14 6 49ers look to be winning I haven't seen this game Kittle's back he's doing the doing some work yeah, Jeff Wilson's Kittle. really having a nice game right now really having a nice game Kyler Murray on the other hand kind of a slow start Kenny and Drake not doing much D hop will struggle. Oh. I think he might have went to locker room actually I don't know if that's true but um, we'll hope it is um, so we'll we'll go back uh, and we'll do the two for two special kind of made that name up but we've done it in the past this idea we're each going to pick two games to touch on uh, week 15 and we'll talk about those four games in total and then we'll move on to this week um, so Mac I'll give you the first two picks which games do you want to talk about all right let's see here let's see first how about you know I gotta go with my Dallas Cowboys let's say Cowboys 49ers and the Chiefs at the Saints. Okay, so let's start with the Cowboys and the 49ers. And Mac, it's your game, so I'll let you take it away. All right, so Dallas Cowboys, obviously, as you see, 41 to 33 win over San Francisco 49ers. Both teams trying to make the push for the playoffs. 49ers out right now, no chance to make the playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys out. However, two wins and two football team losses. Both have a chance, but this win was a very big win for the team. Now they have a chance to make the playoffs. This is what you want to see. The team hasn't came alive, come alive until this point in the season, which does stink, especially as a fan, but they're coming alive when they need it best. The team, most importantly right now, they're having fun. I see uh, you're, you're just seeing a different kind of en energy right now, especially with this man in the lineup at starter and that is tony pollard tony pollard got the start this week zeke out with an injury and a lot of people now questioning if zeke should be the starting running back after this performance 5.8 yards per carry and two rushing touchdowns for tony pollard man he had a great great game but receiving wise the dallas cowboys they did what they had to do they complimented their offense and their defense perfectly. They relied on their defense, and this is the second straight week where the Cowboys got who knows how many fumbles. That was at least three plus in both games, and their defense is playing hard with effort. They may be giving up yards, but they are playing out of their minds. The 49ers, of course, um, didn't have George Kittle, which they do have this week, but uh, the interceptions with the backup quarterback, you expect that. So, I, I'm not really going to touch much upon the 49ers. We all know injuries. This, this is what you expect. But for the Cowboys, even against a 49ers team, which is completely depleted, this is what you want to see. Effort on the defense, effort on the offense, just a team having fun. And the Cowboys, they have not done this all season. And I think if the Cowboys somehow make the playoffs, they could put up a fight against whoever they play just because of their effort. This is what Cowboys fans, we have been waiting for. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I went from team tank to team playoff in the last <laughs> two weeks. But um, Cowboys, they're playing much better right now. And I think it's all because of effort. Yeah, I mean, I don't have too, too much to say on this one. I'm not going to touch on the Niners just because, I mean, it doesn't really matter for them anymore. But Dallas Cowboys, man, they, they have a solid roster. I mean, the turnovers are starting to finally come on defense, which is huge for them. And I think, you know, that can be attributed to their defense really coming to to become more of full health. I don't know, you know, the specifics, you probably know them way better, way better than me, but, you know, you got a woozy, a back. He's been out for time. Mm -hmm. Van Esch is, you know, healthy. Uh, Trevon Diggs is, is in there. Um, so, you, you know, you got all these pieces. Sean Lee, I believe was hurt as well uh, at some point in the year. Um, so all these pieces are starting to finally come back and, and that's huge for them. They're, they're getting their defense at full health. Obviously they're giving up points, but they're getting turnovers. And that's where they need. team needs turnovers. Receiving wise, CD Lamb, you see it kind of a nice game for him. Finally, good to see him. He'll be the, the two next year, and he kind of already is the two next year. Michael Gallup looks like he's on his way out. Rough year for him, honestly, in a contract year. Might honestly, maybe he stays with the Cowboys. Cowboys get him on a cheap deal or something like that, just because you know he's kind of had an underwhelming season. Partly not his fault, though. But like you said, Tony Pollard, big game, six catches in the receiving game. I feel like that's something that also shouldn't go unnoticed. Yep. Zeke in the receiving game these past few weeks. Uh, ever since Andy Dalton really took over helm has not been getting his receptions. You know, he's had at most like two per week. And Tony Pollard changed that six receptions, 60 yards. And I think that's something that the Dallas Cowboys need. They need that run, running back 
uh, to be able to be a receiver at the same time. You saw that with Zeke as a check down to Dak, but you haven't seen that with the Andy Dalton. So good to see Tony Pollard fitting into the offense, getting his rushes, getting his touchdowns. And honestly, Cowboys fans should want that to continue. I feel like if you bring Zeke back against the Philadelphia Eagles this week, Philadelphia Eagles D line is not too bad. So that's probably one of the strengths of that defense. So I feel like Zeke could be in for another rough week. And I mean, if you're Mike McCarthy, you're in this playoff run, you see Zeke going for, you know, a two run, two runs here, you know, con consistently. I feel like you got to make a move in the game and give Pollard the reps because Pollard changed the game. He won the game for the Dallas Cowboys here. So yeah, that's kind of what I got on that one. Yep, obviously a great take, but uh, now we're going with another team this week who is going to be missing their starting running back. And that's the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be starting Le'Veon Bell this week, as we said before. And wait, I just messed that up completely. I do not know why I was thinking we were talking about this week for some reason, but excuse me, last yeah. week that was my bad, but <laughs> Le'Veon Bell. You were connected. You were doing, you, you had to do a transition. I like the, yeah. I like the thought on the transition. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was getting it. I was getting it. Exactly. But, <laughs> Clyde Edwards Alaire, Le'Veon Bell last week started to come alive. I mean, this is kind of the image that was put into our heads when the first uh, when the news broke that Le'Veon Bell was going to the Kansas City Chiefs. This is what we were waiting for. This is what everyone thought was going to happen right away, which it didn't. Right now, of course, Le'Veon Bell next week or today, as you guys are going to be seeing this, he's going to be getting the start. No Clyde Edwards Alaire, but I think the main takeaway from this game is that. The Chiefs, they don't just need to pass the ball. They don't need to get 300 yards passing the ball, 350 yards passing the ball. But now they figured out against the Saints, who the past few weeks have been struggling against the run. But over the past, I believe it was 50 games before that, they were not allowing a 100-yard rusher. And now they're doing against a run defense, of course, as I said, haven't been great the past few weeks. But there's still a great run defense nonetheless. And you're able to figure out how to get both of your running backs involved, get them involved greatly, keep the defense on their toes guessing, not thinking it's going to be in Patrick Mahomes' hands the entire game. You kept them guessing, and that's what worked for your team, your offense. You still put up 32 points, which is a similar number to what they put up just passing the ball, but now they're able to control the clock more, and it's just much better offensively, and it helps their defense, defense out a lot more defensively for the Chiefs. I liked what I saw there. I mean, you saw Tyron Matthew. He was starting to make a few plays. He had a few chances at a few picks there, but uh, didn't come up with them. But the Saints, on the other hand, Drew Brees, I mean, he's great. He's great. Three touchdowns. Uh, it's obviously Drew Brees. But this game, I mean, it feels weird talking about it. If I'm going to say <laughs> 11 case for Alvin Kamara. Uh, but we're going to get to that a little bit for sure. <laughs> talk about him. But Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, that's kind of what you wanted to see from him coming to this team. Uh, when you're not having Michael Thomas, you kind of wish that this happened more at the beginning of the season that he was playing well. But this is great from both teams and both teams. This is honestly, I think this could be a potential Super Bowl matchup. It's going to be Chiefs Saints or Chiefs Packers for me. So uh, this is a great game for both teams. And I don't see any flaws from both of them, if I'm being honest. Just first, you know, this has nothing to do with anything you just said. But Lil Jordan Humphrey, that's a name right there. I mean, I love this. I'm a fan. I mean, sign me up for, you know, this might be my new Andrew Van Ginkle right here. So uh, no, we'll get to it. We'll get to the gangster later. I got some, you know, breaking news on, on the gangster. Um, I'm trying to get him on the podcast also, guys. So um, if you want to flood his DMs for me, uh, much appreciated. But yeah, um, like Max said, it's going to be weird talking about the Saints in this one just because, you know, spoiler alert, Alvin Kamara scored six touchdowns on, on Christmas. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm going to focus more on the Chiefs here. Chiefs are Chiefs, man. They're they're filthy. Uh, this is the best team in the NFL, and they proved that they beat the Saints, who a lot of people consider the team to beat out of the NFC, kind of like what you just said. But the Saints can beat anyone. Uh, the Raiders thing, I guess the Raiders just are a really tough matchup for them, uh, but they're not going to have to face them in the playoffs. So any other team uh, they have dismantled, this was a close one, but ultimately the Chiefs did win this one. Uh, we saw a late field goal there by Butker, I believe, that actually might have iced the game. I don't know. I think it put them by like 10 or something like that. Um, so yeah, receiving-wise, Kelsey, stud, Tyreek, kind of a slow game for him. He saw him drinking some weird yellow lick, but I don't know if that was, you know, a, a little margarita mix or what was going on on the sidelines there with Mr. Tyreek Hill, but he's crushing it this season. Nicole Hardman got his some touches there, as I like to say. But, yeah, overall, a uh, pretty solid game from the defending champs, who I believe will repeat this year as champion. But we'll get to that uh, in the future weeks when we break down the playoff bracket. I'm going to touch on two games, obviously New York Jets, I'm going to have to talk about here, but um, I'm also going to talk about, 
I'm going to talk about Bengals Steelers. I mean, that's that's cake two. That's a cake two games right there. So New York Jets win a football game. It's kind of incredible to say those words this year, but they beat the Los Angeles Rams, who you know immediately after this happened, Rams are not going anywhere. First round exit in the playoffs without a doubt in my mind anymore. Um, you lose to the New York Jets. The offense for the Jets. I mean, Frank Gore had 23 carries. He did nothing, but he scored a touchdown. Sam Darnold. You know, I feel bad for Sam. I feel like every Jets fan would relate that, you know, this isn't Sam Darnold's fault. They feel bad for the kid. Uh, he hasn't had a fair shot. The team has just been, you know, it's just been a disaster for the kid. But, um, you know, you hope he, he can recover from that. What were you going to say? I mean, I think he's happy right now. I think he's uh, um, so No, he's definitely thrilled. Now, um, no, because, you know, right now. Then it, conversation for now. So, I mean – after seeing Justin Fields last uh, last week, you and I as Ohio State yeah. fan, not looking like right now. I don't think mm-hmm. we can consider him as that second pick. So I think Sam Darnold has a lot to be happy about right now after getting that win. Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, I mean, for Jets fans, obviously losing out on Trevor Lawrence, huge, huge blow. Um, it sucks. I mean, it, it's hard to describe. I mean, when the future just gets blown up by this. Um, I mean, I'm glad it didn't come down to like a Belichick tank kind of deal. Um, I don't know what the hell that was, but um, I mean, Marcus May, you know, he's he's really good. I like what I've seen from him this year. I'll just put that out there. But yeah, I mean, just I, I don't know what you'll say here too much, but what the hell? What, what, what the Rams, man? I mean, you you've got my book now as a first round exit. I mean, I, I, that's embarrassing. Man. You lost to the New York Jets, the New York Jets, who were 0 13, and you lost. Yep. I mean, it's crazy. And I, just to uh, say this at first, I mean, it's probably completely not true, but I saw this thing. It was a funny conspiracy theory. So I kind of wanted to put that out there. And it was uh, like a picture of Sean McVay and Bill oh, Belichick yeah, yeah. at one point. <laughs> and it was like Bill Belichick told uh, Sean McVay he'll give him the win this week if they lose to the Jets next week. So it ruins their future. So I just want to quickly say that. But uh, that would actually be pretty funny if that was the truth. But a great game by the Jets. I mean, a lot of Jets fans, it's not what you want to see, but I actually do think Sam Donald's the quarterback of the future. You just got to get him some more pieces, get him on a running back, get him an offensive line, and I think this team could be built and be set up for greatness in the future. This game, as you said, Frank Gore didn't do much. He got 22 carries, but... He got I the think, touchdown, though. I mean, that's yeah, all that matters. The touchdown's all that matters, but the 23 carries, I mean, there's got to be a reason they gave him the 23, and I think that reason was run out the clock. They're, I guess, I don't know really why they're trying once to get they had a uh, like a 13 0 10 0 lead they were like we are giving Fred <laughs> that ball oh yeah but uh ran out the clock and i think that's really why he got the 23 carries not gonna say much on that but sam Darnold, uh he played solid i i mean i'd like to see him have more passing touchdowns in the future but you can't really do that if you don't have the best of water receivers the best of off <laughs> but going 22 for 31 is Actually, what I really like to see, great completion percentage. And that's what you want to see from a developing quarterback, a young quarterback with a very young team around him. But for the Rams, on the other hand, as you said, first round exit. And I mean, I think the N- an NFC least team could beat them if <laughs> uh, get that matchup. But Jared Goff, I mean, we talked about this and I've said this before. It's got to be Jared Goff throwing for 350 plus if they want to win games, or it's got to be Jared Goff doing what he did this week. But Cam Akers are running backs, got to go for over 100, control the clock, and have more than 15 carries. But didn't do that, didn't get the win. So, I mean, pretty confusing for uh, to me. But Jets, I mean, in, enjoy your win. Don't Just forget about the tanking. Forget about Trevor Lawrence. Just, you know, somehow find a way to enjoy it. I um, mean, you know, I'm just looking. I mean, if, if Sergio Castillo was put in this puppy, it would have been a loss for the New York Jets. Sam picking three <laughs> for three from the field. Sergio Castillo would have been – that guy would have missed all this. Stuff. That guy sucks. But this is maybe – I'm really excited to talk about this game, actually. I mean, oh, I it, this is, you know, oh, probably please. the most exciting game in the in the season, a low key. Um, you see the Pittsburgh Steelers, the biggest frauds in the land. Uh, they lose on Monday night to the Bengals at home. Uh, ben Ben, Big Ben, you know, he looks horrible right now. Run game, actually didn't play too terrible. We see Juju. It's lit up by Von Bell. That was, uh, you know, he corvetted, corvetted his way into uh, a hole with Mike Tomlin. It was not great. No, but he, can't corvette, it. Corvette onto his back. he can't Corvette anymore. <laughs> I know he's doing it on his Instagram the other day. I mean, that guy just loves hitting the Corvette. He, he loves doing some Corv- Corvette, <laughs> Corvette. But 
goodness gracious. And maybe my favorite play of the whole season is Mackenzie Alexander's interception and him high stepping at the 50 yard line. I mean, talk about this, like the, the, the Bengals in the first half were probably the cockiest team I've ever seen play NFL football. I, I, it was incredible. I mean, that team had the swagger. You saw freaking Ryan Finley doing his thing. He had, <laughs> you know, he was doing, he was like fucking Lamar Jackson over here. Uh, it was a, you know, wild game. Bengals defense won them this game with ease. Mackenzie okay. Alexander, fantastic game, obviously, like I said, Von Bell. I mean, these guys, they have some good players. Jesse Bates, really good safety. Uh, yeah. You know, Carl Lawson's underrated. William Jackson's kind of underrated. So, I mean, hey, Cincinnati Bengals, what a first half. The first half won them this game. That defense, you know, definitely in the second half, the Steelers came out and were like, all right, we're, we're, they looked a little better. But first half, man, the Bengals were hockey. I mean, these dudes were not going to give up any points. Yeah, but I got to agree with everything you said. I mean, that Corvette, Corvette, he got Corvette <laughs> onto his back after that one. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I just want to quickly touch on, I do kind of find it weird. And I'm actually kind of annoyed by it that, I mean, of course, everyone hates Juju dancing, but I feel like the NFL shouldn't have banned him dancing. Like, they didn't ban him. I mean, or like they're, they're telling him not to, I should say. Yeah. Really, the team, no one had a problem with it in the NFL until they started losing. So once they started losing, then they had a problem with it. And I don't know, just something about that annoys me. I'm not sure what it is, but I just feel like, that situation is kind of wrong. I feel that maybe even the dancing may get him ready for the game. That may even help him. Maybe that's something that, that he did to help him before the or earlier in the season. But of course, past few games it hasn't worked out. But I don't know why that just kind of irked me uh, when I saw that they were making. I mean, stop. I'll, I'll touch on. It. I don't think you happy. It irked me. It made me happy at yeah. the same time. No, I mean, I just don't. I, I think you know. I think it's just like a level of just like almost like just like 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 let's tone it down. Like we're not eleven and zero anymore. We've lost a few games. I mean, after you. After he got rocked by Vonda, I mean, that was – it was over. I mean, that was the end of that. Uh, I mean, you can't recover after – I mean, that was that was a bad fumble. I mean, he he got hit stick the, all the way to, you know – it was it was bad. So, after after you get hit stick like that, it, you know, we'll take a – it's a bye week for, for the Corvette. Week 16 is a bye week for Corvette. They get the dub this week. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll help bring it back one last time. We'll have to see. But big bet. And I mean, I mean, I don't think he's really it for them anymore. I think maybe this may be the draft where they kind of do something like the Packers did last year with the Jordan Love. Uh, ben Roethlisberger obviously is going to probably play for another season or two, um, but just have another quarterback there to develop and get ready for when he's gone. But he's not the quarterback right now. I don't think he deserves to be in the next few seasons. Not that he doesn't deserve to be, but I think he's falling off. He's not as good anymore. 170 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mackenzie Alexander, we love to see it against the Steelers. That's what we want to see. Be Dude, the high step was – that's my favorite play of the season. <laughs> high step at the 50. I mean – and then there was just like – I don't know if it was him or William Jackson, but they deflected the path. They were just like me mugging. I mean, I mean dude, it was – it was inc- – was, it was blowing me – I was in – I was watching it, and I was just like, this is – I love it. Like, I'm a Bengals fan now. Like, sign me up. Like, <laughs> dude, Mackenzie Alexander instantly became one of my favorite cornerbacks just from high stepping and just being like an, a cocky-ass dude. Like, you got to love it, dude. That Bengals team wanted to win, and – and I mean, goddamn, I, I, I was fired up. <laughs> that, that fire, it, it's just fun to watch when that happens, you know? It really is. I mean, if some, if, if a team does that in the playoffs, I think my head is going to fly off. <laughs> that is exactly the TV I want to see. But get back to this. Bengals, they did what they did. You saw 13 uh, attempts passing, and they still won the game. Running the ball, Giovanni Bernard, Ryan Finley uh, got some carries, but – Really couldn't get the run game going, control the clock. As you said, this was their defense. They, they played cocky. They had fun. This is what you got to do. I feel like all these teams that have fun, they win the games. The Bengals came out. They have fun. They killed the Corvette Corvette, and now they're on their way to getting a high draft pick and ruining the Steelers' hopes of making the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was a, uh, a great game, to say the least. All right, well, looks like the Cardinals since last time we scouted checked put one in the end zone and that is correct Kenyon Drake uh put one in uh it looks like they missed the extra po- oh they probably went for two so they didn't no. play the two-point conversion so that game might be finished by the time we're done I don't know if it will but we're going to touch on these two games uh obviously not too too in depth just because um of time we don't want to make this too too long I know we're already kind of running long so real quick Mac uh obviously 
Vikings eliminated, so we don't want to focus on them too, too much. Good game all around, but they got in garbage time. Let's talk about the Saints. What did you like that you saw from the New Orleans Saints, this team? You know, you've been saying 15-plus carries, get it for Kamara. And once they did, I mean, he had a career day and a record day. So, uh, real quick, what did you like from the Saints here, obviously? In a 50-point win, there's got to be something. Saints, you see what happens when you listen to me. I think you got to listen outside <laughs> the arena every single week, and we'll give you advice. But – Drew Brees, two interceptions. I really don't care about that. <laughs> He's going to be a beast. Just bumping the road for him. I mean, we know what he does. No worries about him. But Alvin Kamara, this is exactly what I was waiting for. Not, I mean, I no one expected to be. He was waiting. But Look I was waiting. in those episodes. I Give us some views. Our videos are at like eight views. We need views. <laughs> Give us views. <laughs> but this is exactly what I was waiting for. Alvin Kamara, 22 carries, 155 yards, six touchdowns, tying the NFL record for rushing touchdowns in a game. This man balled out. Latavius Murray complimenting him, 12 carries, 72 yards. This was a great game running the ball. Saints continue giving Kamara 15-plus, and right now give him 20-plus, even better, and then give Latavius 10-plus. It's, it's a recipe for success. Great win by the Saints. Great running the ball. Keep it up, New Orleans. I think this game for me officially, I think, you know, before they were up there, but uh, to me, the Saints have the second best running back due in the league now. I'm not going to put them ahead of Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, but they're right there. Alvin Kamara, yeah. he's a stud. He's a, it's very close. It is very close. Alvin Kamara's a stud, six toddies. I mean, you know, what a day. You love the cleats, what he was wearing, you know, in the holiday spirit. Oh, yeah. Also, about the cleats, too. The guy, he he knew he was going to get the 50K fine or whatever yeah. fine he's going to get. I think they said 50K. But he, this is what I love about the man. He said whatever fine he gets, he's going to match it and donate it to charity. That's what you love to see. Great day from him. Merry Christmas for him. And he's going to make some other people's Christmas, too. Great. Alvin did have a very good Christmas. Santa came for him for sure. Yeah. He delivered him some nice cleats and a uh, a nice game as well. But uh, like I was saying, Latavius Murray, he's underrated. He's really good. He's able to really, you know, pound that run kind of underrated. And he caught, he catches passes. He had three catches, 24 yards. So he's, you know, he's solid. The one thing I'll say about the Saints that I'm a little worried about, Drew Brees, I feel like the injury is still affecting him. You see him on the deep ball sometimes when he's under pressure. He's under throwing balls a lot. That's what these interceptions are a result of. I don't know. I mean, it's not something you can just improve upon. I did see improvements from the game against the Chiefs. I felt like the Chiefs game, he was really probably not ready to come back, but he had to. He knew that case sometime probably wasn't going to be able to, to handle the prime time game with the Chiefs. But, uh, you know, Drew, it's just about recovering. Honestly, after this, uh, I don't, their seating might not be locked in, so they probably have to play him. But if their seating was locked in, I would say give Drew the week off, let him recover. But we'll see what happens there. But overall, great win from the Saints. And now we're going to the counter part of the division, a team that Mac does not like, but a team that did a, an absolute dirty today. 47-7, to Tampa Bay over the Lions. Uh, I'm going to touch on this first. Um, Tom Brady looked very good. First half, you know, he didn't even play in the second half. 22 completions, 350 yards, basically four tutties. And then the reason for all this, obviously it's a Lions, but you saw him use all the weapons. Look at Mike Evans. He had a huge game. You know, he needed to have a huge game. He had one. Chris Godwin. Huge game as well. Rob Gronkowski, two catches, that, but it's two that touchdowns. That touchdown catch was nice. That oh, the Godwin goal. catch was sick. That was awesome. But you see, you know, Antonio Brown had a touchdown. You know, this is what you needed to see from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is spreading the ball around. Also, good defense. Their defense needs to be uh, the top. You know, you saw the lead better. Uh, he got a sack first career. I heard them say that. So I wanted to point Mr. Ledbetter out. Congratulations to him. But, yeah, you, they spread the ball around well. They used – uh, their weapons, like they should blame Gabbert, did some dirty. Maybe they bring him in for the playoffs for fun. I mean, who knows what happens now with Mr. Blaine in there. He even rushed the ball twice. That got me excited. But, um, yeah, I mean, Lions, no, I mean, Stafford got hurt, whatever, whatever. No yep. talk there. Um, you know, we saw the punt return, which is cool, or the kick return, something like that. But, yeah, really, really good showing for the Bucs. This is what you needed to see from them, obviously, against the Lions. But, I mean, it's just a good sign to see that offense moving like yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I just got to say this at first. I hate the Buccaneers, and I still think they're not going to even make it past the divisional round. But I, I have to give them credit this game. I mean, you saw how dominant they were in the first half. They didn't even really have to try 
come second half. Tom Brady, great, great game. What what else could I say about him? You said the stats. I mean, they were both great. Blaine Gabbert came in. He played great. But I think uh, Blaine Gabbert coming in, that's just more. I think the defensive lines were worn out. But Tom Brady coming out there, smashed them in the mouth, uh, bullying them, to say the least. And getting everyone involved right away. Right away, you saw Gronk getting the catch. You saw Godwin getting catches. Mike Evans getting catches. Then you're getting all these players involved. Look, I, how many players did they even get involved this game? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven different receivers. That that's that's the sign of success. I feel any team that could get nine plus receivers involved in a game, they're gonna have success. You never know where the ball's gonna go. And especially having one receiver who can dominate no matter how good the coverage is. And that this game was Mike Evans. That's what you want to see. And then on the other hand, for the Lions, there's not much to say about them. Injuries got them running the ball. I mean, obviously, that's going to be their focus when Stafford goes down. Uh, the Excuse me. The Buccaneers are obviously going to stop that. You got Devin White, Shaq Barrett. You got players who could easily stop the run. So you knew that was going to be a struggle at some points, too, after Stafford went down. So not much to say about them. But the Buccaneers, great showing by them. Still going to be uh, – still – you know what? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to say this. I don't even I don't even want you to win a wild card game, <laughs> but uh, great showing by them. This is what you want to see as a as a Bucks fan, and they got a lot of good hopes for the future. We have to move on, but I also just want to say I was kind of surprised that the Bucks uh, passing record was like 33, 34 touchdowns. I yeah. thought it'd be way more than that. So I was surprised to see Brady broke that. That was pretty interesting to see. But um, yeah, good job by there by Mister Tom Brady. Um, 49ers Cardinals, you know, mid game. Not really going to touch on this. Oh, Niners put up a touchdown, and it was – I might have – Hughes check his two receiving touchdowns. That's sick. Woo-hoo. Cooper Hughes, uh, Jeff Both Wilson also has a receiving ball. putty. I believe he already had that, though. So, Jeff Wilson's pounding the run. So, um, kind of an irrelevant game on the low, but if the Cardinals lose, they can be screwed. So, um, I'm not going to touch on that too much for time's sake. Um, you know, eh, whatever. Um, but we're going to go to the Miami Dolphins, and I want to say to all the fans watching – uh, if you go. stayed in tune with our the podcast, team. my man Van Ginkle, he did not break his uh his his offensive snaps. I believe he had like 24 or something, so he didn't get 30 that he needed. But in is the Christmas spirit, so I bought a Van Ginkle jersey for myself. I'm hoping it's here come playoff time. Um, so I will be rocking that as soon as I get it, uh, obviously. But we're gonna start with the predictions. Uh, we might move a little quick just because I don't want this to be like a too too long episode for you guys. Um, so if we're a little quick, that's why I'm going Dolphins here uh, in the Saturday night game. Obviously, you'll know who wins this one. Miami, uh, Tours, uh, really playing well right now. He's got it going. And uh, I believe Gaskin's back this week, so that should help their offense even more. The Gangster, he'll be in there as well. I can't pick against him, sure. man. So I'm going to go with the Dolphins here. And I believe that means they won't clinch yet, but um, playoffs are, are a good spot for the playoffs here for the Dolphins. Yep, Dolphins, I'm going right away with you. Great team, as you said, to uh, find his rhythm in this offense. And it's kind of crazy to say that they have two two great quarterbacks right now. And when one goes down, the other one can come in. One has a bad game, the other comes in, and they could explode. That's what I love about this team. In the playoffs, I think any offensive struggle they could have, they have – to switch quarterback, it could get fixed. And that's what I love about this team. And then not only offensively are they going to have a lot of success in, in the playoffs, but defensively, they're still playing great. Special teams still playing great. This is a team, it's going to be a dangerous team. And honestly, this could be a sleeper team that could potentially make a run for the Super Bowl. Maybe we're talking about a, like last year's Titan Cup, Titans type of thing happened. Uh, I'm messing up my words right there, but <laughs> I think – sneaky team in the playoffs and they have a lot of potential here or Raiders I I just don't see how they can win this game against a Miami Dolphins team who I feel is better on all aspects of the team it sucks to see our Vegas Raiders you know we're so high on them but now it's just like we're just not feeling them at all um yeah Giants Ravens I'm gonna go Baltimore here um you know Daniel Jones expected to start I don't think that changes much the Ravens look hot right now they're playing really really good football these past few weeks um, I feel like Lamar's finally hit his stride. It's been long enough. So I'm going to pick the Ravens here. Uh, although you never know with the G-men. Maybe the G-men pull something weird. But give me the Ravens. 
Yeah, I think this is going to be a close battle. Ravens, as you said, they've been better. I don't think they've been great, but they've been easily much better than they have early on in the season. Giants sort of picked things up. Colt McCoy came in. Daniel Jones expected to make a start. And actually, I think Daniel Jones, that start may actually hurt the Giants and how they play. We saw the other week when he came in injured, he did not play well. So that could affect him here. But hopefully he's good to go for the G-men. But this can be a very close game. We know Giants, they're fighting for their playoff lives. They need to win their two games here. Uh, but it's going to be close. But I have to give it to Baltimore. They've been playing better. Lamar's been playing better uh, offensively. I mean, they may have some struggles in the past game. But, of course, in their run game is insane. Uh, you're going against the Giants' run defense, who was also great. But uh, the Giants, I think they're going to struggle this game. It's going to be a low-scoring game. Ravens going to come out on top and a close to win. Agree with that. Chiefs, Falcons, pretty quick one for me. Chiefs here at home, not going to lose to a Falcons team without Julio Jones here. Uh, I mean, uh, we can't pick against the Chiefs right now. And, you see, you know, looking at their schedule, we're not going to be able to pick against them next week either. So Chiefs um, are going to get the W here, uh, and they are looking at – I mean, a near-perfect season. It's kind of incredible. This team yep. could – like, it's probably going to go 15 points. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm going Chiefs here. Yep, it's crazy. 15-1, and one, it seems very realistic at this point, but they're going to easily win this game. 14-1, and one. Falcons, only thing I'm hoping for, Ridley, go off. That's my only hope for Our that. boy. Chiefs, they're going to win easily, I'd say. Our boy, Calvin, is going to have a day. And now the Cleveland Browns with this game, it's actually going to be down four receivers, it looks like, which is interesting. BJ Goodson also tested positive. So Cleveland Browns are without a fair share of players here. I'm taking the Cleveland Browns. It doesn't matter for me, though. Uh, you got that running attack, and that's what they're going to lean on here. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt is going to be the is going to be the dagger for the Jets. And I feel like with even the tight ends, like we have Austin Cooper in there, they have David Njoku, Harrison Bryant uh, involves as well in there. So Baker Mayfield going to use those tight ends. They're going to have to get creative a little bit, but you know, uh, the running game is going to be the key for them. And the New York Jets are. You know, they're going to have to put up some points. This could honestly be a game the New York Jets could win now yep. uh, with the receivers out. Uh, there's definitely a chance the New York Jets win. That said, Cleveland, uh, I mean, imagine they miss the playoffs because of COVID or something, dude. I mean, that would be the worst thing ever for that fan base. I'm rooting for the Brownies, my Cleveland roots. I honestly want them to – I definitely want them to win this game. What am I saying? Uh, yeah, I'm not cheering for the Jets when they could get the number one pick. So I'm going to just stop talking. I've been talking for too long, so give me the Browns here. Yeah, uh, but Browns should easily win this one, I mean. But actually, I'm thinking that it's either going to be a blowout by the Browns because they're running attack, but if the Jets somehow find a way to slow that running attack down or even stop it, yeah. the Jets actually could pull out a win here. But that is pretty unlikely going against two of the best backs in the league. But hypothetically, if they are somehow able to stop the run attack, Jets, I think, will win this game. But yeah. Browns, the run attack is way too good. Tight ends are going to get involved. I think we're going to see a lot of bootlegs, a lot of things like that, especially, as you said, those three tight ends, Njoku, Cooper, and Harrison Bryant. These guys are really, really good. And I think they're one of the most slept on uh, uh, tight end groups in the league. They're all great. They're all studs. They all could – uh, they all have their own set of skill sets. That's amazing. Browns are going to win this one over the poor New York Jets. Speaking of poor, Kevin and Joke, man, he's been asking for a trade for like two years, but I guess it's worked out. You're on a 10 and 4 team now. So, I yep. mean, poor guy, though. He just he wants out so bad. The Browns are not. <laughs> it's like held, holding him hostage here. In this game, I'm going to pick the Jacksonville Jaguars to be a New York Jets fandom here. Mike Lennon is going to get the start, and he's going to lead the Jags. No James Robinson. And oh, I we're like going that. these documentary type things right now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. We, well, <laughs> you know, when you when you do your little thing, you hype them up. You hype them up. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No feeling. James Robinson. The backup, I believe, name is it might be Dade Okimibaya. That is not that is bad. I might have to edit that out. <laughs> Dare, I believe that is his name. I'm gonna actually Google search this for the fans. Jaguars RB depth chart. We're going to give you guys an in-depth look here. Let's go to the ESPN website. We're going to look at the running back. It is Dar Ogunabola. This is what I am Not talking about. Documentary type. They got oh. DJ Shark, Larry Scachano, Keelan Cole. The O-line is underrated. That's an underrated asset. And you got Mike Glennon, the man himself. That oh, baby geez. is um, – I mean, let's look at the picture. That's all you need to know, and that's why it's a revenge <laughs> game for Mike Glennon. A revenge game. And you think he's going to lose? Get out of here. Mike Glennon in six. 
That's like saying Mike Glenn is going to win this game by 40 points. Let's go, Jags. That's exactly the type of voice I wanted to hear when you were going over that. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I love the pronunciation of that name. <laughs> I still am not going to even try, but <laughs> uh, you know what? For you, for you, for you, let's just do it. Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm not going to have any reason beside for you. I don't have a reason <laughs> to pick them, but I'm just saying for you. That's it, Jags. Jags, baby. Roll Jags. I don't think that's a thing, but we're Duval. Duval, baby. Du- I'll, throw some I'll buy a, a Mike Glennon jersey. Thing. Bro. No, I, I'm already – I'm going broke on the jersey, so I can't make that promise, but – Maybe Mike I get Glennon, let's get they win. It's a revenge you know game. They win. I'm asking my parents for a Glennon jersey if they win. All right. Mac will get a jersey if Mike Glennon gets his W. All right. That's, that's the Bengals, play. Texans. I'm going to stick with the weird picks. After the Bengals W, Mackenzie Alexander, the best cornerback in the league, is going to be going. And he's going to be doing his thing. He's going to be <laughs> stepping it up. And he's going to be, you know, doing his little no good. It's going to be a, a big game for Mackenzie. Carlos Dunlop. Is he on the – no, he's not on the team. Shaq – no, <laughs> is he? No, he's not. Shoot. Shaq Lawson is going to be bear-hugging, you know, the, the quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who's going to exit in the first quarter with an injury. That's my prediction here. Um, wow. We're going to see the Cincinnati Bengals win this one. Uh, Ryan Finley should begin the nod, I believe, after that. Bengals announced a few roster moves. Good to know that they're announcing those. But the Bengals will get this W. Mackenzie Alexander, big game. Carlos Dunlop will not be playing for the Bengals here if he's on the Seahawks. But Jack Lawson will play nice. I'll give him the Bengals here. You know what? You beat the worst former 11 and 0 team in history. But you still beat them. They still had their 11 wins. The Texans have four wins. So if you do the math there, you know, <laughs> that's less wins. That's less wins. So less. the Bengals, mathematically, the they should win this one. They mathematically should win this one. They beat a team with more wins. They mathematically have I'm sensing a butt. I'm have sensing a butt. To. The Bengals winning this one. We're doing really? one of those dances. Sean Watson is having two picks in this game, in my opinion. It's going to be mm. – he, he is going to have three touchdowns, though. He is going to have three oh, touchdowns, okay. though. But those two picks, they're going to save the Bengals. They're going to get a win. And the Bengals defense, they're going to get a few turnovers this game just aside from those picks. You know, maybe we're going to get see another fumble, another two fumbles. We'll see. Bengals, they win this game. You know, let's just go uh, 27 to 21. Let's see it. All right. I like I like the you know, this has gone off the rocker right now. So I think we ought um, to keep this up in future episodes. Yeah, I mean this is entertaining to watch, honestly, right now. Colts Steelers. They need to do. This is a rough one. I'm gonna just pick blindly here and I'm gonna give the Colts a win. Uh I like what I'm seeing from the Colts and I don't like what I'm seeing from the Steelers. Colts uh, I believe had a really good win last week, actually. Um yeah, they beat the Texans, obviously beat the Raiders. They're on a, a three game win streak right now, uh five of their last six. So Colts are feeling hot. They're going to the Steelers. Steelers are, you know, no more Corvette, Corvette, but, um, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe Michael Pittman gets out there and hits a go of it, go of it. You know, who knows what happens. So, um, g- give, me, give me the Colts here just for just for fun. And the Colts, honestly, might be the better team here, honestly. I mean, I hate the Colts, but they might be the better team. So, give me the Colts. You know what? I really could care less about this game. I hate both teams. So, we're going back <laughs> to Siri here. Colts won, Steelers two. Siri, choosing number one. Oh, he's one going to Siri. If it's gonna work, choose this. Hey Siri, choose a number between one and two. Two. Give me the Steelers, sadly. But Steelers winning this game. Uh, I'm not even gonna give a reason why because I hate both teams and I don't want to give a reason for either of them to win a game. But Steelers, according to Siri and my calculations, are going to win this game. Calculations. We got it. This is a special weird Panthers Washington. I'm gonna give this one to the football team. Uh, you know, Mr. Haskins over there from the Ohio State University was also like James Car- Harden doing some strip club stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, and these guys are, they're going to town right now. And if Dwayne plays, he's going to be, uh, you know, he got the captain's patch removed. He's fighting for something. But Alex Smith, I think, will probably get the start. This means too much for the football team. Uh, even if Alex Smith is like a little shaky, I feel like I'll be like, Alex, you're going out there today. We don't care. <laughs> so uh, give him the football team here. Panthers, no CMC. So uh, Mike Davis will probably have a rough time with that Washington D line. So I'm going to go football team here, like I've said three times now. So 
I'm going to go football team. I mean, have I said that enough? Football team? Football team? Football team? No, I'm going against you. But the things these guys would do for a little lap dance, I mean, <laughs> the things they would do. Give me the Panthers, please. Please, please, please. McCaffrey, sadly, is out. But Mike Davis, he's going against that Washington football team front seven. He's going to have a tough game. But that only means Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, outside. They are going to ball. They're going to go to town. And I think their defense, I think their defense is going to get the Haskins or Smith, whoever it'll be. I think the football team will not even put up 14 points this game. That's my prediction. Panthers, 21. Football team, 13. My prediction. Chargers Broncos, real quick, what do you have here? It's kind of irrelevant, so we don't need to talk. Chargers. It's going to be Chargers for the fun of it. I'm going to go Chargers here, too. Um, Eagles Cowboys. I have America's to. team versus the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, Neither yeah. of these teams are America's team anymore. Dallas has lost that. Um, I'm going to go for the Eagles here. Honestly, I hate to say it, but um, I do it's feel like the Eagles are going to win. Twice. Twice. Um, the two games I need to stick with me. All right, so we have muted Mac uh, for the segment, so I can speak here. Um, I'm going to go with the Eagles here. Wait, oh, you're, you're mute. I, I guess I couldn't. Um, all right, I'll stop. I'll let you get your chance. Right. You let me get my. All right, Hurts is playing well. They almost beat the Cardinals last week. The Cardinals did the dirty already to the Cowboys. Um, Eagles, Jalen Hurts really playing well. Just like I said, I keep repeating my words. Um, I just don't feel like the cow. I feel like the Cowboys are just due to have a bad game. They've been playing really well. I feel like the Eagles playing well, Cowboys playing well. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Jalen Hurts. So I just want you to take a look at where is this game being played? Dallas. You know uh, who everyone hates. And what happened last year in Dallas when these two teams played? Shh, it's COVID. It's COVID. Shh, just let me enjoy. Cowboys making their push for the playoffs, just like last year. They're trying to get the revenge. They're trying to and get it. And they're not going to get it. Last year. And they are going to get it. They are. That Cowboys fan base, you know, you know, maybe I got to make a few phone calls to my dad. Like, you know, let's hop on a plane tonight. Let's let's go over there and let's go get rowdy. Let's get rowdy. Cowboys and their fans, they're going to bring it. They're going to show a lot of effort, a lot of heart. They're going to come. I actually think this is going to be a big game for the Cowboys D-line. You're going against the Eagles offensive line, a lot of mixing and matching, mixing and matching. And it's like been over 10 different combos this year. Cowboys D-line. They're going to have some fun. It's been the linebackers and the defensive backs time the past few weeks, and I think it's time for the defensive line to get some love. It's going to be their week. They're going to get a few sacks, a few fumbles against this rookie Hurts. You see what the Cowboys did last time versus Wentz. It may have been Wentz, but they're getting a lot of pressure. They're forcing them outside the pocket. They're making them make these weird throws, and that's what they're going to do this week. They're going to put Hurts in uncomfortable uh, situations to throw the ball. Cowboys defense, I think, gonna, is going to win this game. And it's going to be a low-scoring game, maybe a low 20s, maybe not even hit 20 for uh, for some of these teams, for both these teams. But Cowboys, give them the win. That's why I chose the Panthers. And then one week left for the Cowboys to have a shot at the playoffs. <laughs> Rams, Seahawks. I'm going Seattle. I will never pick the Rams again after what they did last week. <laughs> Seattle at home. They just clinched the playoffs. Penny Hart got the activation. He's ready to go for the Penny big Hart. boys. Give me the Seahawks here. Penny Hart going to have a big day. Give me the Seahawks as well. I think this is going to be a fun matchup again. DK and Jalen Rams. Yeah, I'm excited to see that one. That's going to be a fun one. Two uh, big mouths uh, over there. Two guys who just – I like that fun playing football. Excited to see that Seahawks getting a win here. Titans, Green Bay. Who are you got here? You know what? Give me the Titans. As I said, I love me some Derrick Henry. Probably my favorite player in the league outside as a player outside of the Dallas Cowboys. He's trying to get that 2K. I know it. This is the defense he's going to have a big day against. I know it, and I want it to happen. The Packers, they're going to put up a good fight. It's going to be high scoring, you know. Hot take, hot take. Both teams put up 40 points this week. Hot take. That's my hot take. 40 points from both teams. Titans going to come out, play hard, smash mouth football, make the Green Bay Packers try and throw that ball quickly. But they're going to come out on top. They're going to have some fun today. And tomorrow, yeah, today, when you guys are seeing this, Derek Henry is going to have a day, and they're going to sit at 11-4 and four after this week. Aaron Rodgers, primetime Sunday night football. You're not picking against that here. I think it's a little silly that you did. I mean, when Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth are in that booth right there, 
it's Aaron Rodgers bowl game. Um, and I think, you know, he's just so experienced on prime time. You're going to Lambeau field, it's tough, different environment for the Tennessee Titans. Um, you're not in the South anymore. Eric Henry, you know, probably have a great game, but I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Devonte Adams, Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones is finally getting it going. He's been really, really good. A few hundred yard rushing weeks in the past few weeks. Um, so I'm going to pick the Packers here. Um, it should be a good game. I agree, but you know, I've not been too keen on the Titans ever since they got blown out by the Browns. I feel like that for me was a, I mean, I guess they didn't get blown out, but they really did get blown out. Just got garbage time. But ever since that game to me, the Titans have kind of been uh, a team that I haven't trusted as much. So I think the Packers are on another level uh, and they're going to get this win. I'm hoping to see another Derrick County stiff arm this uh, t- today too. Yeah, who will get Last the stiff arm? That was, dirty. The that was nasty. Right to that the floor. Was, right to the floor and this one i mean it will be a pretty easy game for both both yep. of us to pick here gonna be the buffalo bills i believe mac will pick them but they're playing great they had a great game last week on uh saturday night football i believe it was josh allen looking to have another good week obviously they want to beat the division rival patriots just keep you know beating them down and uh buffalo i don't believe they'll i mean yeah i don't think they're gonna, i don't even know if they have a chance to get the one seat so i don't know how the seating works but um, yeah, they just want to keep improving the seed, maybe overtake the Steelers. So they're still playing for something. They're playing for that two seed right there and a chance to play potentially, uh, potentially their division rivals could be there, the, uh, the Miami Dolphins. So we'll see what happens there, but I'm going to go Buffalo and I assume it's the same. Yeah, I'm going with Buffalo too. I mean, those fans, a whole nother level. I mean, you're, next week I'm saying those COVID cases, they're going to be rising in Buffalo after those big parties. <laughs> <laughs> they had some fun. They're enjoying it. They're going to have fun trying to get 13 and three. Uh, they're going to be behind uh, Kansas City, I believe for that number two seed, having some fun. You know what? And I hate the Patriots, too. We all hate them. Bills easily winning this game. Well, that's going to do it for our predictions there. One thing I want to uh, to do real quick before, uh, since I don't precisely know when we're going to film next week's episode, we're going to predict the uh, the college football games for the, the, the two uh, the big games. Um, I mean, do you want to do the New Year's Six games, or what do you want to do? Do you want to do all of those? Why not? Why not? Let's do all it. All right. So we will do um, college football scores. All right. So real quick, we will predict these uh, these games just because um, – just so you guys know who we're picking beforehand. Um, when is this bowl game? So New Year's Six bowls are – here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm going to share this puppy dog, and we'll get it. We'll get it yelling. All right, so first game, Peach Bowl, Georgia-Cincinnati. To be honest, I don't know much about either of these teams. Um, I'm going to go with the Bearcats. I don't think they lost a game this season, um, and, I'm, and I'm right. So um, I'm going to – oh, they lost to Memphis. Oh, no, that was, la- that was last year. Okay. They didn't yep. lose to Memphis. They're undefeated this season. Uh, and Georgia, on the other hand, I believe, has, has suffered – they lost to Alabama. Uh, they also lost to the Florida Gators, but – um, yeah, I'm going to go Cincy here. Kind of an underrated team. People expected them to kind of be in the contention. It's kind of weird to see them to get the eight seed in the end, but uh, I'm going to go with the Bearcats. They'll get, uh, they'll continue their undefeated season and, uh, and probably, you know, like UCF that one year, be like, we need, why aren't we in the playoff? But they shouldn't be. But that's another story. But yeah, Bearcats. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. Cincinnati at home as well, too. This is a team I know a lot. A lot of people at some points in the season, they thought they should be a playoff team. And even at the end of the season, people thought they should be a playoff team. They're going to win this game. Great team against Georgia Bulldogs, who, I mean, you're losing to two teams who, well, one almost made the college football playoffs and the other one that's the one seed. You're going against a team that possibly should have made the playoffs. You're going to lose this game. Uh, Give me the Bearcats. Yeah, you see right here, Cincinnati's a very, very dangerous game here. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Auburn Northwestern. Auburn somehow squeezing in here. Uh, I'm going to go Northwestern, though. Auburn uh, and Bo Nix. I believe they fired their coach, but they got the new one. I don't know his name, to be honest. I'm not a pro with all of this stuff, but Northwestern playing good football that only lost uh, came to Michigan State in the regular season, and then they played Ohio State pretty close. After seeing that, they really uh, took the Ohio State passing attack away, and that's going to be the key here against the Auburn Tigers. I mean, you just see, for instance, in their games that they're winning, Bo Nix plays well, and then Cartavius Bigsby. Uh, they got to be able to stop him. Obviously, could be an issue. We saw what Trey Sermon did. So if you can't stop Bigsby, could be an issue, but they should be able to control Bo Nix in that passing attack. So I'm going to go with the Wildcats here. 
Yeah, this one actually is pretty easy for me. It's, it's easily Northwestern for me. Last week, you're putting up a great fight against Ohio State. You did have your struggles against the run game, but first half of that game, you were shutting them down. In your offense, they were doing what they had to do against the Ohio State defense. Easy pick for me. Give me Northwestern. Next one is going to be one of the college football playoff games, and the next two are going to be the college football playoff games, actually. Notre Dame, Alabama here. This is pretty easy. It's going to be the Crimson Tide by a fair margin here. Uh, it's a big gap between these two teams. We just saw Notre Dame get blown out by Clemson. So Mac Jones, uh, Devontae Smith, and Najee Harris will all be having nice big games. Give me the Crimson Tide here, and it shouldn't be close. Yeah, easily give me Alabama. You got your wide receiver, probably number one in a Heisman uh, voting right now. This kid is a beast. He's going to be a very high draft pick. Not sure how you could pick against him. You having another first round draft pick probably in Mac Jones. I mean, this team is on fire. It's going to be easy. Notre Dame, as you said, couldn't beat Clemson. They're having their struggles. Alabama. Best team in college football. Give me Bama. Bama, I mean, they're wide receiver you at this point, basically. I mean, they last year, two first rounders. This year, Devontae Ooh, Smith. Yeah. I don't know if Waddle is declaring he might be. I'm not too sure. I, but think I don't think I don't know if Waddle will be a first rounder, but Devontae Smith sure will be a first rounder. This is the game that we are more attached to. The Ohio State yeah. Buckeyes, Clemson Tigers. It's a tough one. Um, yeah. Clemson Tigers are the better team this year. Last year, I would say the Buckeyes were the better team. But this year, Clemson Tigers are the better team. I'm going to pick Ohio State, though. I'm not going to pick against them just because uh, I can't do that. But I'm going to go Ohio State here. Justin Fields is due for a bounce back week. Obviously, it's a tough, tough matchup against the Clemson Tigers. But I feel like hopefully Olave should be back, I believe. That is huge for him. We saw with last week with just Garrett Wilson was doing. Didn't do too much there. So getting Olave back. Olave had a good game last year in the uh, the college football semifinal, so hopefully he'll be able to do the same thing here. Defensively, the key is just shutting down Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. You can't let Travis Etienne go off. That's what killed Ohio State last year in the semifinal. We let Etienne get some, uh, just kind of, kind of just Etienne beat them really. I mean, he was great on the passing attack out of the rushing game last year in that semifinal. So key is stopping Travis Etienne, but also keep Trevor Lawrence in the pocket. Don't let him escape. Don't let him gain space. Uh, and just play lockdown defense against those Clemson Tigers. But it's going to be a hard challenge, but I'm going to get the Buckeyes a close first. Yep, give me the Buckeyes as well. I can't be against them. I mean, we're both Ohio State fans. We have to choose them. I'll start off with the Tigers. You got Trevor Lawrence. You got Travis Etienne, two studs offensively. Probably, well, obviously, one's going to go first overall. Uh, the other one is going to be a high second round or late first round, and that's just only because of how the running back position is valued. Otherwise, you'd probably be top 15, top 20, something like that. But Buckeyes, Justin Fields, He's going to step it up this week. I mean, he's going to have a lot of back probably. And Garrett Wilson, I mean, he's more suited at a number two, as the number two receiver in an offense, as we saw last week. He, uh, he's not capable of being a number one right now. But the key, the key player for this game is the kid who went off last week, the freshman running back, Trey Sermon. This no, he's a se- I think he's a senior. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, what if? What, what, why did I say freshman? I'm so I mean, it's his first year at Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I meant. That's what I meant. So, yeah, obviously he transferred this year from Oklahoma. Um, last week he went off. The kid is a beast. I mean, his draft stock is rising. I think this kid has a lot of potential in the NFL. He has a lot of burst last week. He went off. I think he's he deserves to be the starter for the rest of the season. I mean, a Master T, I mean, he shouldn't even really get that many carries. He hasn't been it. <laughs> Sermon, he's been a, he's been average, yeah. Yeah, he's he's been average at best, and uh, he's gonna carry this Buckeyes team to another victory. I mean, after having a great game last week, I don't see why you you wouldn't go back to him this week. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I don't is the Gator Bowl a New Year's Six Bowl? I don't really know. Is that a what? I guess it is. I don't know what the New Year's. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Florida, Oklahoma. This has got to be one of the, the, those good games here. Yo, really like, good game here, honestly. I'm going to go Florida here. Kyle Trask wants to have that one last hurrah uh, before entering into the draft. Obviously, I don't think Kyle Pitts is going to play, obviously, here. I believe he declared and is missing this game, which sucks for the Gators. But I still feel like the Florida Gators, honestly, will get this win. Obviously, Oklahoma has had a resurgence getting back to that two seed after uh, a really rough start uh, to the season. 
But uh, we've seen Spencer Rattler turn this team around. So we'll see if he can have him here. It should be a close one, but I am going to take Kyle Trask here. Yep, give me Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts, and those Florida Gators. I mean, you know what? If Trey Sermon stayed with the Sooners, maybe this would have been a different story. <laughs> maybe they would have made the playoffs as well, too, if they had, uh, had him go off for a few games. Yeah, had that little bloop from me before. I do not know why I said freshman. <laughs> First year at Ohio State. But uh, Florida Gators, I actually think this is going to be an easy win for them. This could be a 10 to 14 win, point win for them. Give me the Florida Gators and their explosive offense. All right, so I'm trying to locate these other – is Oklahoma State Miami one? I, I don't know what the bowl games are, to be honest with you. Um, sure either, yeah. I'm assuming Iowa – I'm all right, we'll just do these two and, and then we'll call it because the others are kind of easy. Oregon, Ohio, Iowa State, I really don't know much here. Um, I'm going to go Iowa, Iowa State here. Um, yeah, I have, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, I should have asked about this game, but I have no idea. So I'll go Iowa State. I don't know if you have any idea about I, – I, I don't know much here. You know what? I know so much, and this is why I'm picking Ohio, Ohio State. And this is because the Ducks are ranked 25th and the Cyclones are ranked 10th. So you got to pick the ranked 10th team over the ranked 25th team. So give me oh, Iowa State. <laughs> I just got word the 49ers have beaten the Cardinals, so that hurts the Cardinals draft stock. But we are not – this episode is already like an hour and a half, so we're not going to talk about that. We're going to finish. Playoff, Helen yeah. Moans. Helen Moans. He's going to beat the Tar Heels here. He's having a great year for the Aggies. Aggies thought they would get in here, uh, but they didn't. So that's unfortunate. But Aggies, they had a really good year. But I'm going to go with the uh, them and Kellen Moan, who had a great year this year against the Tar Heels, who uh solid team. They blew up Miami recently, but uh, I'm just not going to pick them here. Yep, I got to choose them as well. Great team. They got the five seed for a reason. They made that playoff push or they tried to get into the playoffs. Uh, but the Tar Heels, I mean, they got a quarterback over there. I don't remember his name, but I uh, – <laughs> They have – they do no. – I believe they are starting a quarterback, yeah. No, the, this is what I'm trying to say. So Sam Howell, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big Tar Heels fan, and uh, he told me that – well, yeah, Sam, whatever his last name was – he is projected yeah. right now to be the number one draft pick next year. So I thought that would just be interesting to say real quick. But interesting. I'm, I'm oh, not, wow. Yeah, he had a big game this game. I'm just yeah, yeah. Fast, so, yeah, I, I didn't know much about him, but I just want to quickly say that that I heard yeah. he's projected to be that good and that high of a draft pick next year. But Texas a and they deserve this spot, the number five spot, even potentially that playoff spot. Let, let me take yeah. Texas a and yeah, well, we didn't really know too much there. Uh, we <laughs> probably should have just picked the, uh, the college football playoff there, but – yeah, a little fun segment to end it off. And uh, Mac, why don't you wrap this one up before the uh, the viewers fall asleep because this shit is uh, very long. It's PD13. I've cursed three times. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get demonetized, except we don't have monetization. So, um, yeah, we're making 0.00. Zero dollars, guys. We make zero dollars on this thing. Yeah, but we're gonna... after New Year's, we could be seeing <laughs> After New Year's, we'll get money. You're going to see that. We're going to see that episode very shortly in the next coming days, weeks. We're, yeah, days, excuse me. Uh, but we want to just quickly thank all of you for watching us. It's been a great year. We started over the summer, and we've been doing great. We've only been improving and having more fun as time goes on. And I just want to thank you all for watching, and especially if you made it this far. You're definitely a loyal, loyal fan. So we really appreciate that and everything you guys have done for us and helped us out. So with that, I just want to hope you guys all had a great and a, yeah, a great happy holidays, great Christmas, whatever you guys celebrate. And I hope you all enjoy your New Year's. Please make sure to follow us on all our social media. My Instagram is mac.romo. Griffin's Instagram is Griffin Senek. And our podcast Instagram is Outside the Arena Podcast. We would love it for you guys to reach out to us there to give us any opinions, whatever you guys want to do, just talk sports in general, any ideas for future episodes. We'd love to hear it. We appreciate all of you. And we can't wait to see you all next week on Outside the Arena.